And we're off. This is the great classic rock debate. I'm Kenny. I'm Paul with zero qualifications. And I'm Steve. And we talk anything and everything classic rock. We try to have fun. We try to keep it interesting. If you're watching right now, please like, comment, and subscribe. We will love you for that. Hey, Kenny. Yes, yes, Rodney. Um, your head is almost off the bottom of the screen. You need to yes. move your head up. You're like, you look like Mystery Science Theater. I, I, okay, fair enough. I'm sitting on pillows, but I was worse before I put the pillows down here. So at least I'm sort of. All right. Here. I just, yeah. you know, okay. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Kenny, Kenny is not a dwarf. No, I'm not. Yeah. But if it cuts off part of my face, I'm told it makes me more handsome. <laughs> Steve, are you doing the same thing? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So listen, let's let's get into it. Several months back, we were doing a show one night and we were talking about the band Free. Free really only has one big hit, but we talked about the fact that that's, that's a shame because they had a lot of really good songs. They were a talented band and their lead singer, Paul Rogers, just a phenomenal voice of rock and roll. And Steve said, Steve, if I don't do justice to this comment, correct me. Steve said, you know, as I was growing up and listening to rock, that song, All Right Now by Free, sort of became like the face of, of rock and roll. I instantly associated that song with classic rock. And when you said that, I thought to myself, man, that's a, that's a pretty solid choice because if I had to choose an artist song, artist and song that represents classic rock, I don't know if I could come up with a better one than that. That's really good. So anyway, we thought what we would do tonight is uh, just everybody throw out some of their options, their choices that they think if the term classic rock was in the dictionary and you need to have a picture next to it, like an icon, what artist and song by that artist would would represent classic rock? Okay, did I did I do a good job? Perfect. Of, okay, yes. Good. Like, in my okay. mind, the most classic rock, classic rock song. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I like that. Yeah. I like that. And yeah. and you know, last week, Steve, you were not sure if you were going to make it, and I said to Paul, I would rather have all three of us present for this. Sometimes it probably doesn't matter, but the fact that we have a a greater age range when all three of us are here because i i noticed as i was making my choices they lean strongly towards the earlier days and i think that my age probably factors into that so uh so anyway we'll get a a, a greater diversity of opinion here all three of us are are present does anybody want to go first well, well let steve go first since he he brought out free fair enough and he's yeah. free to bring up free yeah so besides free i'm i'm gonna go with the band bad finger oh, and okay. i'm gonna lead with the song day after day okay now for years a couple of the songs uh no matter what day after day and come and get it so those three songs to me define classic rock but i did Wonderful. not like them when i first heard them really? because for years i thought they were ripping off the beatles <laughs> and then <laughs> i found out just recently from Kenny that those songs were actually produced by Paul McCartney and George Harrison. George Harrison and, right. and specifically, I think it's uh no matter what the steel guitar, I always thought I was like, what, why are they ripping off George Harrison? But the, the, not steel, but the slide guitar, kind of the intro of it. Right. That is, it kind of, it reminds me of a George Harrison uh, right. But also maybe a little bit of like Dan Fogelberg and the and the vocals from it. So it's just, it's just kind of like a very mellow, soft rock uh, sounding song. Not necessarily my favorite song, but I also didn't realize these guys were British either. In fact, oh, yeah. they're Welsh. But this just goes to show you that like when when British people sing, at least in, in, in the 60s and 70s, they didn't you can't hear the accents and so like that's why it always threw me off with with bad finger. right so, right so that, i'm gonna go with uh you know bad finger but if i had to pick pick one song particular would be uh, uh day after day okay and i and i think that that one probably is the one that over the years has been the most often bad played by by bad finger they might play some of the other ones also but that's the one i think that they played most as far as bad finger goes anyway yeah Paul, you want to go next? Or you want me to go? Uh, I'll go. Uh, but now, Steve brought up a point, which I don't. I don't know if you've seen this movie called The Commitments. Have you seen this movie, Steve? No, but I've seen the 
the soundtrack for that. That guy, I don't know. I don't know who that, that guy movie is. Movie is utterly fantastic. Yeah. Oh my god. So when they start recording, they're doing ride uh, Mustang Sally, and, and when they do the chords, they go ride Sally, ride. The guy stop, stop, stop. Right. This is a blue song. You don't use your real accents. Use the American. Right. Ride Sally. Right. right. And you said about you. You know they're purposely doing an affectation. Right. You know. Um. So anyway. Uh. Yeah, so mine is now when I think of classic rock, and this is what's funny about what Steve says, which is totally his opinion is totally valid. But when I think about classic rock, I'm thinking guitars, loudish vocals, and we're talking about a couple of main topics, chicks, and possibly yeah. sex. Can I just and, add and, one thing to it? In, in my what? mind, it's not hard rock. It was like in my mind, I was thinking like of a song that defined kind of like 70s rock, not necessarily hard rock, but like kind of bridging that hard rock versus kind of the, the mellow stuff. That yeah, you but that's what that's, my, that's what I'm saying is I'm slightly different than you. I'm saying that I am, although it's harder edge. So, of course, oh, I'm not saying I'm not saying no, I know you're not. I'm saying that's, but you're <laughs> no, no, no. Badfinger is awesome. I love that band. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so uh, mine is Bachman Turner Overdrive and you ain't seen nothing yet. It's but this guy. Hook it up with this girl, and he thinks it's good. And she's like, "Baby, all the other girls you were with, they're amateurs. I'm gonna blow your mind. Right. No pun intended." And uh, so th I think that because it's talking about scoring and uh, getting chicks, and this and me, that's what, and that's the kind of the transition from the early classic rock into the American. You know, the from the British came into the this American stuff. You know, Aerosmith <clears throat> and the, and that edgy. And that's just what. Can I ask you a question? In that song, yeah. can she do more than dance? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's also a foreigner. Like, I, I, that, that's in my list as well. So, so okay. yeah. But it, it got this edgier music with uh, a little grind, not heavy metal guitars, but yeah. So I, I just, that's, and there's a million ant right answers. So, all right, Kenny, right. your shot. Okay. So you guys both, things that you said, I have to, they lead me off, but I don't want to go off on tangents, but it's just comments I have to make. First of all, even though this wasn't going to be my first choice, I'm going to go ahead and mention no matter what, because uh, Steve mentioned Badfinger. So back in the late 80s, I'm going to say somewhere around 87, something like that, I worked for a couple of months at this. It was kind of a bar restaurant kind of place, almost like a Bennigan's. It wasn't called that, but they on fr on Friday and Saturdays, they would have a band like a house band that would come in and play. They would play to like an over 35 crowd and their music, their music choices were mostly what you would call classic rock ish, at least, you know, and I don't even know if I knew the song no matter what. But man, that was a part of their playlist. They played it and they played it good. And I'm going I love this song. I didn't, I didn't know who sang it, but I found out just because of that experience. And that's how I kind of, I knew about Day After Day, but I didn't know Badfinger sang this song no matter what. And I loved it. I thought it was so catchy. And then, of course, they've got a bunch of other great songs. And if you guys have never watched Breaking Bad, the series, one of the best TV shows ever, the song Baby Blue factors in prominently I don't want to say too much, but it's great. Just tr trust me, the way they use it is great. And then, um, Paul, about BTO, I just want to mention real quick, at the age of 15, my very first rock concert, West Palm Beach Auditorium, it was great. I mean, they were really popular at that time. So you're seeing them when they're sort of at their peak. And I guess it was somewhat predictable, but their first encore was, you ain't seen nothing yet. You know? I got so, a question for you. Yes. Did they cover any of the guess who songs if they did i don't remember it and at the age of 15 i didn't know the guess who songs well enough at that time i mean i knew american woman and i don't think they played that if they played no time or these eyes or one of these i wouldn't have known that was the guess who okay i'm so, just curious like right certain band you know um like i think i told you guys i saw velvet revolver and they did uh uh, interstate love song, right? Okay, but Slash right. played the lead on it, and it was okay. it was the same notes, but in a completely different universe of playing. So I was okay. just curious. Slash was he took that guitar, sure. anyway. 
Uh, so, all right, your your turn, I, Kenny. Still, yeah, okay, yeah. So I'm just gonna go with uh, the Rolling Stones' "Give Me Shelter," okay, simply because. Well, first of all, it's the Rolling Stones, so you can't really make any bad choices. And this one just holds such a prominent place in that late 60s rock scene. And again, I found myself leaning towards earlier as opposed to later, because at the time that the term classic rock was first becoming a thing, which was sometime in the, I'm going to say 86 or 87, like Guns N' Roses were not yet even, they weren't even a thing yet. So no one would have called them classic rock. And maybe you could have called Van Halen, but they weren't even 10 years old yet, you know? So to be classic rock, when the term first was born, you kind of had to be 60s or early 70s. So that's kind of where my brain goes. So anyway, my choice, Rolling Stones, Give Me Shelter. Phenomenal song. Well, okay. So I lost a bet on this to a okay. British woman. Okay. Who is the name of the woman who sings back up on their studio version? Oh, um, I, I know it. It's um oh I can't think of it now. It's not Mary, Cl Mary Clayton. Clayton. Isn't it Mary Clayton? Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. And Steve, I don't know. Very good. Well done, Kenny. Um Steve, you know the move you know the story about movie of the Gimme Shelter movie, right? They were no. playing where was it in uh Altamont. Altamont Springs, yeah. and they hired the Hell's Angels to be security. <sighs> and there was like a black guy. I don't, I don't know what he did, or just because oh, he, he had black. a gun. They actually, there's a great video. There's a great video on YouTube where they use, they slow it down and they show the single frames, and you can see the gun in his hand. So what he had was a he gun. doing with the gun? Or shoot Mick Jagger? Who knows? Who knows? So, so they, Steve, they killed him. Yes. The Hell's Angels killed him. Yes. And it's all they on basically. Video. They hired the Hells Angels as security, and then whatever the agreed upon payment was, they gave him unlimited booze on top of that. <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel much safer in the hands of the Argus event staff, who uh, that's <laughs> that's that's who all the stadiums use now. So okay. Oh yeah. All right. well, anyway, I just I, didn't, I knew Steve might not know that, and it was as like a you're like. No, I've heard that story. I just didn't. I I didn't re remember okay. that that song yeah. was about. It, so. All right, Steve, you're up, buddy. Well, you already mentioned the Guess Who, and American Woman obviously is uh, that's on my list. Steve and I just we we're gonna have a big overlap here, but that's fine because that's a great choice. Yeah, yeah, no, there's probably not a need to go into any further, but that that's at the at early age. I remember being just like in junior high, high schools, playing football, lifting weight, going to the going to the gym and uh they would play the classic rock stations and it was always like you know I'd always hear the guess who at least once a week and uh, American woman and uh well, you know do you understand that's, the that's, irony Steve when I started the, the irony of that song I Lenny Kravitz covered it I don't know no guess who they're Canadian they're not American yeah so. oh, right it was considered a dig at the yeah. United States you know yeah. but whatever you guys are jealous. Yeah, whatever. Should, let me and let me just mention this really quick because as great of a song as that is, it was probably not until the mid '80s that I first heard that slow bluesy intro. Which, which it's not the same song if you remove that. It just no, destroys exactly. the song if you remove that. Well, first time I heard it, I went, "Wait, what? Where'd that come from?" I know, I, and that's a great question. When you hear it on classic rock stations, do they always play the intro? Because I sometimes think and sometimes not. I've, okay. Yeah, I've heard both. Remember, that's a topic for another day. Correct. Steve. I agree. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Mine's going to be yeah. uh, Fortunate Son by Credence. Hmm. Good choice. Uh, I love that song. And it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, they're, so, they're like, they're, they're one of the Mount Everest or Mount Rushmore, sorry, Mount Rushmore of classic rock, in my opinion. They, they just, uh, you know, he's, Talking about how he's he's a poor kid and these rich people and he's kind of ripping it like people are over the top being patriotic. You know, it's, it's, he's he covers a lot of right. ground in that song. Oh, yeah. I agree. We're going we're going to see Fogarty here. He's coming to town in August. So great that show. Should, that should be really good. Yeah, and and I think he, if you're making a movie about Vietnam, you have to put that song in there every oh, yeah. time. It's mandatory. Yeah, every time. Yeah, <laughs> agreed. Every time. Yeah, and you know. CCR's hits all were jammed into like a two-year period. I mean, they cranked out hit after hit after hit, all within this like two-year span, and then that was it. But um, 
But when he reemerged in the mid '80s with his uh, solo album, what was it called? Uh, Centerfield. Centerfield. Oh my God, it was great! Oh my God, you say to yourself, this guy hasn't lost anything. I know he ended up. Then he gets sued by the previous record company because his song ripped off one of their songs, or I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's the old man down the road is uh, the other song in the jungle, right? I think I think that was it. Yeah, I think that was it. Well, which I, it's, I maybe could see it, but I, not enough for a lawsuit. For so. me, it was a stretch, but they did sue him, and I think they settled it or something. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to my next choice, which is. Layla by Derek and the Dominoes, also known as Eric Clapton. Okay. Song was released in 1970. I don't think, I think I heard it first in 71. I think I was in junior high uh, the first time I heard this song. And of course, when you're that young, I would have been 11. When you're that young, you can't fully appreciate it. All you know is that when you hear it, it's like, wow, there's something really special and powerful about this song. Now, Again, I don't want to go down this tangent, so I'm just going to mention it real quick. And I don't know if you guys know this, probably not old enough to know it, but the original release of Layla, it fades out before the acoustic piano. Yeah. Really? It's like a three minute, it's like a three minute song, the end. Steve, that yep. look on your I, face I right that. there, that says it all. That, yeah, that's definitely the radio edit. The, I mean, exactly the uh, original 45 yep they fade it down it's barely three minutes long and there is no piano it's just the, oh my god there's on that album there's some interesting songs on the album there's yeah. an album that a song i like better it's called why does love got to be so sad yeah that's a good song clapton is just ripping away baby yeah. i mean you know holy crap uh steve it's your turn i think is it well then I, I'll see your Eric Clapton Layla and raise you white room by Queen. no you bastard I was gonna do that <laughs> I assumed that, that there was gonna be some overlap so you know. that is my uh, yeah I mean that's a super group and I you know I I love I put it over Layla because of the drumming on it and me being a drummer I I just I cannot listen to that song and not play drums on the steering wheel in the car and for you those <laughs> listening to this who are drummers you know exactly what I'm talking about so. Um, I just love Ginger Baker on that, and, and right. that's that well, to me that defines something. classic rock. Until I saw the Joker, I'm gonna I'm gonna admit this freely. Until I saw the Joker with Joaquin Phoenix, we won the Academy Award, and they played at the end of the movie. It's the first time I've heard that song 177 trillion times, and it's the first time I realized it was about the white room being in a, in a, a sanitarium or insane asylum. I never thought about the lyrics until that movie. I'm like, huh. oh my god. He's in a white room and he's trapped in there. And he- uh, I never, th- I never thought about it either. To tell you the truth, that's exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> that's one of the rare times when I actually listen to the lyrics of a song, and I that's what I assumed it was. So yeah, like, okay, that's All one right. out of a hundred for me. <laughs> you, you guys know I've talked uh-huh. in the past about how, I, as a kid in grade school, my sister was in the bedroom next door playing loud Beatles and Led Zeppelin and stuff. So I heard it through the walls, and that's how I first got exposed to it. Uh, "Sunshine of Your Love" was the song by Cream that she seemed to play a lot. So, uh, so I. I sort of veer towards that one, probably more the white room, but you know, they're great songs. They're very good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is it my turn? It is. Yes. Okay. Uh, we've talked about this song before and I think all three of us worship it. In my opinion, it doesn't get played enough. And this is, I think, I don't know if you guys agree. This is a song that I think Greta Van Fleet should cover. And it would take them to the top of the universe highway star. Oh, I think that guy purple. can pull pull that song off. Yeah. I think he could pull off the vocal. Was it Ian Gillen, right, on singing that? I believe. I and, think so. Uh, yeah. Highway Stars. And we've talked about it. It's, it's one of the progenitors of heavy metal sound. Yeah. That song. Yeah. That's and my that, favorite. Uh, it's great song from them. Yeah, it's great. And he and that guy Jake was it Siska or Kiska from Greta Van Fleet. He could hit those notes too, and and if they they could they could just sprint money, but. What I love about that song is it's got like a guitar solo and then a, a keyboard, an organ yeah. solo. Like it's very rare that yeah. you have those two that are, and, and it's a heavy keyboard solo. Like, yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a metal song. It yeah, is. That's a, that's a Black really good song. Away, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Um, okay. So am I up? Yep. You're up. Yeah. Okay. 
So in putting together uh, my choices, I was trying to not just make this like a list of my favorite songs, okay? Because if I thought the song was a, a great representative, uh, an icon of classic rock, I, I, mean, I, I chances are I like it. It doesn't have to be in my top 10 list. And this next song, I like it a lot. I don't think it's going to be on my top 10 list, but it's a, it's a great song. It's kind of a one-hit wonder, but I still think because it's, I think, 71, and it's just... <laughs> It's just a classic hard rock song, and it's Mississippi Queen I, by Mountain. That, I, was my, I gonna be, that was my next song. Good. I'm <laughs> glad that we're overlapping. That's great. It's just it's a great song. And if you are, let's just say you're in the car driving somewhere and you're channel surfing, if that song were on, there would be no mistake you are listening to a classic rock station. There's nothing else it could possibly be. So um, I think it's the face. I That's agree. That is, that is, that might be the most classic rock, classic rock song of all yeah. time. Yeah. And it's got a cowbell in it. Does it have a cowbell? Did you, did you hear Zach Wilde? Yeah. How he, he covered it a long time ago in like a parking lot. Yeah. For, yeah. I it was like the greatest that. subway commercial of all time. Oh, I mean, uh, there wasn't guy. a sub. There was a subway in the. He played. Uh, this was back in like the mid nineties. He played a concert in in like in Michigan in like okay. a strip mall. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And he, in the middle of the day, <laughs> he's ripping. Away. I was like, God, this is really good. Um, and behind him was a subway. Yeah, that's right. Oh my god. <laughs> and so for the entire concert, all you saw was a subway sign. Oh, and it wow. wasn't intended to be like a subway commercial. <laughs> it's probably on YouTube. I'm gonna have to. Oh yeah, that. that's why I saw it. Well, Kenny, so, there, um, there was that show called That Metal Show, right? Correct. So the guy on there, Eddie Trunk's like a historian of rock, and he had the guy. I think it was Leslie Weist or West. West, Leslie West. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it He's was the guy. That, that's a stage name. The actual yeah, yeah. name was a, a longer Weinstein. Weinstein. And the poor guy he got he got heavy and diabetes. He had to have yeah. his leg, empty, and he was in a bad way. And yeah. you know, it's like the guy. I don't think sometimes people don't realize the effect they have on people with their music until he come there and the people are clapping for him. He's like, I could. He was I could visibly right. Like I don't know. I thought it was cool. Yeah, I agree. If, if, you, if you don't remember the cowbell, just listen to the outro of that song, and all all you hear is just the uh, the the guitar and drums and you hear a cowboy bell and that's okay. it, it plays throughout the entire song, but that's okay. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to it. And listen, let me just add this real quick because even though they're sort of a one hit wonder, they did actually have a follow-up album called Nantucket sleigh ride. And the title track, I, I think I downloaded a few years back and played it. And I was going, wow, this is a great song. It, it sounds nothing like Mississippi queen. So, you know, we, we've talked before how bands sometimes get into a pattern and their songs tend to sound alike. Sounds nothing like completely different. But in my opinion, it's a great song. And by the way, that's a that's a slang term, Nantucket Sleigh Ride. Do you guys know what that means? Is that has to do with the limerick? <laughs> no, no. OK, I'm not I am not making this up. I promise I'm not making this up. So sometime in the distant past, when these guys who were whalers would go out in their boats, they speared the whale and then tied the rope on and the whale would pull them suddenly. Hmm. And it was like a sleigh ride, but not in snow It's in the water. And they're at the mercy of this whale pulling really hard. They call that a Nantucket sleigh ride. Oh boy. That, there you go. Man, that, that's probably what rednecks did before it was, uh, before they invented four wheelers. Perhaps. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So anyway, there you go. Um, who's, uh, okay. That was, Steve's that next. me. Yeah. Right. All right. Black Betty, Ram Jam. Good choice. Great choice. I have this desire to make a, a music video with uh, Bighorn Sheep ramming in Buffalo, <laughs> ramming their heads set to that, uh, that How song. How many so. versions? Are there 25 versions of that? Like, like there was the original, was it Lead Belly who did it originally? Ram Jam. No, no, no. That's that's a cover of a blues song, dude. Okay, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm, it pro I'm, I would not be surprised. I've never heard another version of it, but I would not be surprised. I, I wouldn't before. be surprised either. But I, if it is, I didn't There's know. There's a it. band from Australia called Spoiler Bite. 
and they do the best version ever of that song. It, okay. It's, anyway, so yeah, I'll look at them. I'll, I'll I'll verify that. To okay. me, uh, nothing says classic rock like like that song though. It's a it's a good choice. Yeah, good choice. And they're they're they are a one hit wonder. There was never yeah. another song from them. Okay, Paul, what do you got for us? Okay, so this one's going to involve Kenny, as you, some of you may know, is a pretty good computer when it comes to mo uh, movie dates and, and uh, song dates. So we go see this movie, Uncommon Valor. Mm. Okay, so we're watching the movie, which blew me away. Matter of fact, I got to go, I got to download, I got to get that movie. I don't have it. And uh, so have you seen this movie, Steve? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, when, so, when we had a when VHS first came out, VCRs, that was one of the few movies that was available for us to rent. So I probably watched it thirty times. So they they're real. Was that with Gene Hackman and yeah, and Patrick Swayze, Randall Tex yeah, Patrick Swayze, Randall Tex Cobb. Uh, yeah, Damn. great great movie. Yeah, you and I saw it. I think okay. together. Okay. And as we're watching it, they're reassembling the team. So it's now is 75, 80, some period of time like that, maybe eighty one. Okay. And so when they they're they're packing up, they're getting a guy, and they start playing a song, and the guy starts dancing. He goes, "This is a big hit, man, for us." And they play, uh, "Oh my God, Sugar Loaf, Green Eyed Lady." Okay. He starts dancing. The guy in the movie dancing. And you look over and go, "That song didn't even come out till '73. It would have been impossible for that being during wow. Vietnam." And I okay. went, "Okay, well, damn." Right. Yeah, well, there you that, go. That stuff was, always bothers me. That happens all the time. No, but yeah. Kenny just, just, I mean, pow, yeah. rushed him. Like, oh, I, I, all right. I'm not going to argue. He knows that he knows dates better than I do. And I was like, damn, okay, good. Right. So, but that yeah. song has like 60s influence, heavy 60s influence. Yeah. That's and, good. It's a great song. Uh, yeah. So, and, and, and that's another radio edit victim. Oh my God. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. And they just it chopped it down song. to three minutes. That's like a six minute song. Yeah, and yeah, it's a, yeah, it's it's a great, really, so. really good song. They have another couple of hits, like Don't Call Us, We'll Call You. Very good. I'm surprised that you got that. Excellent. Uh, but Green Eyed Lady stands alone as their real classic rock song. Yeah, of course. The other yeah, ones were still. more like pop songs or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Ready? I'm up. Uh, okay. I'm looking at my list here. I've got, we're, we, we got our warning, so we're going to have to finish. We'll do one last round and then we'll wrap it up. But, um, I'm going to go with, oh, man. What? Okay. Because I, I got two really good choices, but I'm only going to go with one of them. So I'm going to go with Steppenwolf, Born to be Wild. <laughs> that, that was my next one. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, this song, just the imagery that goes with this song. And with Steppenwolf, the band, they were, you know, they were rocker dudes. They were from Canada. And because this song was embraced by the biker crowd and still is to this day, I guess, I don't think they, they've ever uh, abandoned it. So uh, there's just so much imagery and it's a, and it's a hard rock song. But at the same time, it's it's catchy and you kind of want to sing along to it and it kind of makes you push your chest out as you're singing it like it's you know i don't know i don't know what it is about it but it's iconic and i feel like it is definitely representative of classic rock so. it makes you want to do one extra rep at the gym yeah i agree with that yeah i agree well and, and kenny and i we're, steve and i will be a broken record on this i love this song one of the greatest songs ever made and it's one of the 10 15 songs where another band covers it and their cover is superior and it's the cult they do it and i think it's far better than the original i don't know if okay. steve agrees with me but it's, it it's, is i don't know if i would say it's better but it's damn near close okay i think it's better but it's just like uh, i don't wait anyway so go ahead i'm done well go when talking. i when i saw blue oyster cult in concert not the cult blue oyster cult in, in 1979 west palm Beach, same place i saw bto I didn't know that they had recorded a version of Born to be Wild on one of their albums. So when they played it live in concert, you know, the crowd went wild. But I couldn't help but think, like, why are they playing this? I, I mean, their version, fine and all that, but not better, not better than the original. So, you know, but I'll have, yeah, to, but listen that, to, yeah. I'll have to listen to the cult and uh, give, it a, give it a shot. All right. Whose turn is okay, it? Okay, each of you do one more and we're going to wrap up. Steve, your turn. Uh, uh, Slow Ride by Foghat. Oh, <laughs> oh great song. Good, Man, good, I, good choice, I Steve. I love that. 
that song every time i hear it in a car again i got a drum to it and when there's that rest and uh just a one beat by the the bass and the floor tom and the snare i always got to play that but that is just uh that's that's classic rock that that's i concur the, i totally concur and by the way we were talking earlier about british bands when i found out those guys were british i'm like you got to be kidding me Same everything here. about their sound says they should be american and they're not yeah uh did they have another hit uh, uh yeah they had cool like the two or three others they had a couple yeah, true. yeah. Fool for the city was it fool for the city was one they had an album in 78 called Stone Blue, and that song, the title track, was a really good song. And it doesn't get played much on classic rock now, but oh, on the I rocks. Just, I was going to say, I just want to make love to you. That is a, that's yes. a good song. Yes, oh, which was definitely oh, no. originally a blues song. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll finish, and I'll bring up, you know, someone uh, who we all love, Ted Nugent, Cat Scratch Fever. So Okay. You don't love that song? No, I do. I'm just saying there's probably a half a dozen Nugent songs that you could. Uh... Yeah, and, and this song, I don't know if Steve will agree with this, but the cover by Pantera I... is pretty pretty damn good. I, I was going to say, uh, if you're not aware, Pantera actually did cover it. And uh, they I didn't know. And they played it live a lot of times. So. It's really good. I mean, their cover is really good. Like, I think Nugent should just go re-record it with modern equipment. And, I, you know, I don't know if he wants to do that or not. Not gonna listen to me. I'd like to see okay. Nugent record Pantera. Ooh, yeah, that's a good idea. Cowboys oh, from hell, he could kill that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, listen, we're we're out of time, so we're, we're gonna wrap it up there. I I still had several others, so maybe we'll continue this at another time. But we also want to do the 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 show about the long versions that were edited for radio and ruined. That's a great topic. That's a great discussion. So uh, anyway, but for tonight, that's it. So um. Do you guys, I don't, I hadn't really given it much thought. If you guys have a song that you want to nominate for our classic rock playlist, uh, please feel free. Otherwise, we'll just close it out. I got Anybody? one. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, this this was actually the first song Led Zeppelin played together, but uh, listen to, it's been covered by lots of bands, but Train Kept the Rolling by Aerosmith. Oh, that's uh, a great song. Yeah. So yeah. Many, many, most people know him for their 80s and 90s work, but. Yeah, Train Kept the Rolling, another like 40s or 50s blues song originally. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Train, train by uh, Blackfoot. Oh, that's a great song. Yeah, that, that great is classic song. rock. As well. uh, oh, another sorry. one that the has sorry. an intro, the harmonica intro. Oh yeah. Oh, and wow, wow, wow. and if you take that out, it's you're getting cheated. It's 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 not right. So uh, okay, that's we're gonna wrap it up for tonight. This is a great classic rock debate. Um, I'm Kenny. I'm Paul. I'm Steve. And if you're watching right now, please like, comment, and subscribe. We will love you for that. Until we meet again, we'll see you next time.